Welcome to Bods Mayhem Hour. Your source for all hard rock, heavy metal, new metal, alternative, punk, horror punk, hardcore, rock, and all local bands with your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. What's up, everybody? This is Morgan Lander, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Wow. The views and opinions of the guests do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Bod's Mayhem Radio Network, its staff, affiliates, or sponsors. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Radio Network. Hey everybody, welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I'm your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bod Father. And as always, I'm bringing you guys and gals awesome interviews. Today, it's a huge honor and very huge privilege to have Miss Morgan Lander of Kitty and lead vocalist of Car Chaos. Morgan has joined Canadian Symphonic death metal band Car Chaos. Car Chaos is working on new material right now as we speak. Should have a new album out sometime next year. Also, Car Chaos is playing the Agonist CD release show September 20th and 21st in Montreal and Quebec City. So, Morgan, congratulations. And, man, welcome back. Finally, you're back. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been it's been a long time. But, I mean, I've been sort of out of the game for, I guess, a long time. So, uh, yeah, it feels, it feels really good to be back. So, thank you for having me. How's it been working with For the Wind Media so far? Jamie's pretty awesome. Oh, yeah, she's amazing. And honestly, I've known Jamie for a number of years. She's worked on a ton of projects over the years that we have, that we've done albums and uh, documentary. She also did the the PR for that. So, like, she's a good friend of mine. She's an awesome lady. I love seeing her. She lives far away. She lives in New York City, so we don't get to see each other that often. But whenever we do, it's always great. And, yeah, she does amazing work. And, and she knows she knows me. She knows us. She knows you know, the kinds of people that we want to, that we want to talk to. And so here we are. <laughs> How's it feel to be back and especially be back with the band Car Chaos, especially what they bring to the table for music? Well, it, I mean, honestly, it feels amazing. I have felt like in the last few years, like I really wanted to create something, but I wanted to try to step outside of, you know, the box that I have been in in the past. And this was a great opportunity for me, you know, trying to find the right project. I actually have known the band for a number of years because Justine, the drummer, who actually played in Blackguard, we toured together. We became really great friends and we've just kept in touch. And I've, you know, heard since she joined the band, all of the progression that Car Chaos had made. And then finally, when I guess the time came, we actually had a a good conversation about, you know, the potential for me to be joining the band and it took me a while to think about it because there is a little bit of a distance factor you know they are a montreal based band and i live in uh, southern ontario so it's a little bit far but i think with the way that technology works these days you know you can make anything possible so it's really great to be working with someone who is a great friend of mine who is an amazing musician and all the people in the band are amazing musicians so this is going to be a really really fun really cool thing What's impressed or excited you the most, Morgan, about working on this new material, if anything, so far, possibly with Car Chaos? Oh, God, um, the musicianship and I think the, the diversity. It's, oh, it's a, always an interesting challenge to sing and write over someone else's music. Like, you know, all these musicians in the band are absolutely phenomenal Mm -hmm. and for me in the past only ever writing for kitty writing my own music and then you know already sort of knowing what i'm going to be singing over over top of stuff when things are sort of coming to fruition you know this is again me stepping outside of the box that i'm sort of used to and i'm just really impressed with you know the the new material the direction just uh the musicianship in general is just fantastic and for me i think it's going to help me to open up some some different avenues in terms of my voice and what I can do and what I'd like to do, try some new things. And I think it's going to be better than ever, honestly. And that's good that you're pushing yourself outside that box because I think a lot of people just stay in that box and they're so scared of going out of, of, of that box because they're afraid of what people think. And I'm like, this is your music. How can we stand behind your music if you can't stand behind your music? 
Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think sometimes for even for personal growth, pushing your boundaries is one of the most important things. And that's actually part of the reason why I agreed to to do this. I think for me, you know, the last few years, I've been toying with a lot of different ideas with musical projects and stuff like that. But yeah, I just really thought that in order for me to like grow as a person that I needed to sort of get back out there and try something completely different while it's still in the same genre, you know, it's still metal. It's just a little bit more of a more extreme version than what most people, you know, who are kitty fans may be used to, but it's still going to be the same, the same voice, just, uh, just even crazier. I think. I agree with that a a thousand percent because you talk about kitty and you talk about car chaos. They are totally different music styles. Uh, mm-hmm. But but they're mm-hmm. metal. But they're metal. That's true. But they are two totally different styles. I mean, my favorite song by you guys with Kitty was "What I Always Wanted." That song was so heavy. It was just like that's the direction I hope you guys went because that was oh man, it just gave it that extra punch. <laughs> as I should say. Thank you, thank you. Well, yeah, like there is gonna there is gonna be a lot of of uh, different and diverse things. I mean, Car Chaos is known for being a more of a you know symphonic symphonic and melodic death metal band but uh in the new material there are definitely a few more songs that allow for a more open and more melodic side of the band as well which is something i think was explored definitely on the last album but i think is will be more solidified with the new one that we're working on right now before joining car chaos when you was out for a little while did you have any band remotely close that you could have put out there and be a part of possibly honestly no i had never really been given the opportunity i mean obviously like uh, you know everybody dreams of like you know sort of falling into the perfect situation and for me i actually this has sort of been a dream of mine to be in a band in front of band while not really having to you know you know sort of be stuck there with a guitar i mean while i've always loved and appreciated that aspect of things because I think it's important, you know, to have, you know, women, you know, playing guitar and singing and, you know, doing it all. But for me, I've, I, sometimes it felt a little restricting. And I think this is, this has always been a little bit of a a dream for me to be able to be unbound, just Mm -hmm. to have a microphone, to be able to get in people's faces and to interact with the crowd a little bit more, not be so stationary. So, you know, just on the, aesthetic side of things and and the performance side of things i feel like it's definitely going to be a little bit of a different thing but yeah like nothing no opportunity has ever has ever come up where it's come close to being you know my perfect scenario and this this really does i mean in in the last few years i've worked on a number of projects um actually justine and i have another band with uh, the ex keyboardist in blackguard and but that is completely it's a completely different style of music it's not metal at all it's like sort of electronic or whatever Mm -hmm. and we have an album we just haven't put it out yet but you know like for me i think because car chaos is already a very established in their area and they're established within that kind of scene so it it only made sense to sort of you know just jump right in and, and hit the ground running any tracks standing out more to you than any right now that you guys are working on if you could talk about it possibly i know it must change every time you talk about it or listen to it but do you have any that stand out possibly for you well it's funny because um uh you know as a band we actually haven't really released any information about what song titles are and stuff like that however these shows that are coming up on the 20th and 21st we will be debuting two new songs and i actually will have to say that those two i think are my choice favorites so i might as well just put it out there it'll be it'll be out in the open in about a week's time anyway so the two songs are called The March and Ravage. And both songs are, there's some melody to it. The March is definitely a little bit more of a, like there's some blast beats in it. It's pretty heavy, but it also is a very like, it is almost like a march. You know, it's very kind of mid-tempo at some spots, but all very heavy, all exemplary in terms of music. And I think the songs just in general are going to go over really well live. And, and those are definitely two of my favorites. Since you just coming into the band here for a little while now, how much writing of the songs have you been a part of, if any, possibly? Well, actually, all of the songs that will be on the album were actually already written musically when I joined the band. So basically, the scenario has been, we have music, you know, here it is, have at her in terms of what you want to sing, what you want to say, where you want to scream, where you want to sing. So I've had pretty much free reign uh, when it comes to 
vocals. So yeah, like I mean, the the music has already been well established, and I, I'm pretty sure that they had a lot of those songs even for upwards of a year now. But I'm still able to have my creative freedom when it comes to to writing, as far as like the vocals and the melody and and where to put things and whatnot. So it's mm-hmm. definitely you, you can definitely still tell that they are my touches for sure. <laughs> has this been a challenge vocally somewhat for you coming into Kokayos? Yes and no, only because I feel like I really want to be able to push myself. And because it's been a number of years since I've sort of been out and recording and, you know, in the music industry, that I want to put my best foot forward. So, yeah, I am writing some things that I think are going to be very cha- very challenging, but that's my job. My job is to, you know, come up with things that I think are great and then be able to pull them off. And whether or not that means that I have to, like, practice more, which I have been. But, yeah, I think I think it's definitely some stuff is is challenging the screaming part is not that challenging it's always the singing and the melody and hitting you know the right notes and and sort of pushing boundaries and whatnot that's that's always been a challenge for me so i know car chaos has an ep and two full links out uh, i think the ep and one of the full links was under a different name possibly i may be mistaken on that i think the the first ep was under a different name and yes. then there is another ep that was under the name Car Chaos, and then the two full lengths, one Empires and then Children of the Void. How much okay. of the catalog have you had to learn quickly, possibly? Well, it hasn't really been that quick. I mean, I'm definitely familiar with the music um, because, you know, of my connection with the band. I actually even did a guest vocal on the song Colossus on the last album, on mm. Children of the Void. So I was well aware while the recording was happening of the songs and whatnot. So, you know, I have been a fan. I have known the songs, but I I would say it's been pretty quick, you know, ever since we confirmed for these shows coming up with the Agonist for their CD release. Um, I've had to learn a number of the songs from Children of the Void, a couple songs from Empires, and then obviously in between that writing, you know, all 10, 12 songs that will be, that will become the next album. But for me, I don't know. I think it's it's always fun. It's not that difficult. I For me, repetition is just the thing that I have to do every day. I listen to the set every day. I sing the set, and my voice is going to get stronger, and it's going to get burnt right into my brain. Um, and then I'll go up early to like practice with the band and whatnot. So it, it hasn't been too traumatizing. <laughs> but... Uh, but yeah, like it is, it is definitely a lot of work and I feel like my mind is consumed with the music, which is not always a bad thing. I know earlier this year, Car Chaos parted ways with former vocalist Vicky Boyer and she mm-hmm. did, she did a great job, but what do you bring to this band that, that may give it that extra punch if anything possibly? Well, I mean, I, I love Vicky. I have met her before. I think she's an amazing talent. And I love the last album. I think Children of the Void is an exceptional album. And the work that she did on that album, obviously, going forward, I'm going to have to try to to carry that forward. So for me, I think that what I really bring is a bit more of a seasoned attitude towards things. Like, for me, singing in a band is old hat. You know, it's something that I've been doing for a very long time. So fronting a band, I'm very comfortable in front of an audience and whatnot. I think for me, I personally vocally bring a little bit more of an extreme edge to the music itself i am definitely a little bit more you know eager to you know try to sound scarier try to you know maybe sing about themes that are a little bit more evil you know i like i like the dark side of things and the darkness is where i tend to sort of go so i think it will definitely be a bit more on the on the extreme side of things but really i just bring you know, like 20 plus years of experience, which I'm not exactly sure how that conveys to other people. But to me, it's just really a comfort in that I can sort of fall right into place and bring, you know, like a a certain attitude towards it. And yeah, and you know what I mean? And it's like, like being up on stage is something that I'm, I'm pretty comfortable doing. And I always have been and yeah, it will just be a new a new confidence, I think, with the band. Yeah, and, and I'm not saying it's just because you're on the show, and I, I'm a big fan of your music, but when, when you're singing, you have to pay attention to it. And I think that's good. I think vocalists should have that presence. When someone sings and you're in a crowd and, and you're just not you know into it, if they can grab your attention, that's what they should do. And I think you guys accomplished that a long time ago, especially with your vocals. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you very much. I, I really appreciate it, you know. And, I, yeah, I think it's, it's important, you know, bringing a certain – 
you know, attention and like, you know, I say charisma is a part of it as well. And I don't know, I, I don't, you know, me thinking, Oh, I'm just me. I don't think I have charisma, but I mean, I guess, you know, the, the years of people supporting the music that I've helped to make, I guess maybe says otherwise. So, mm. you know, I'm just going to keep doing what I, what I do. And, uh, I think, uh, it's not broke. You yeah. don't need to fix it. That's exactly right. <laughs> don't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> exactly. Do you still see yourself musically growing from where it started or has it just been more of a personal growth along the way for you? Oh God, it's been, it's been both for sure. I mean, like I think back to the music that was written for, you know, Kitty with the first album and I'm like, wow. I mean, that was, it feels so long ago. And I, it, I feel so almost detached from, from that in from the person that I was, you know, like those songs were written when I was 14 years old and, you know, I'm 37 now. So it's been a, a, a long journey, but I think along the way, there's been a lot of lessons that have been learned both personally and musically. And I think even with the kitty catalog, you can hear the progression, you know, in the music and in the subject matter and the musicianship in general. And so for me, I think joining Car Chaos is kind of like the next logical step for that. So, but yeah, like there, there has been a lot of uh, personal growth along the way as well, especially I'd say maybe the last 10 years of my, of my life, you know, my, both my professional life and my personal life, you know, with, uh, with Kitty and with everything it's sort of happened in the last few years with that and sort of stepping outside of the spotlight really, and, and taking a step back, but then also in doing the documentary, sort of having to go through all of the things that we'd been through and sort of relive them and speak to people, you know, from the past that, uh, you know, hadn't really been in touch for a very long time. It was a very, cathartic experience and and even in doing that I feel like I've I've grown as a person and come to understand a lot of the things that happened in the past a little better and come to accept them and learn from those experiences as well in your own opinion Morgan what does car chaos bring to the table for music that's not out there as of right now I know no one is reinventing the wheel but what are you guys adding to the wheel oh god well (laughs) Um, like I said, I like to think that, you know, there's, uh, there's a hell of a lot of experience there. Like, I mean, Justine toured and played in bands for years. Um, it's just a level of professionalism and a desire to, to want to, you know, bring our music to the masses. Like you said, you know, it's not invent reinventing the wheel or anything, you know, there's a lot of metal bands out there, but you know, if I have something to say, I think, you know, we're going to want to try to climb to the top of the heap there and you know me joining the band I think you know is a big part of that you know having the experience that I've had and and whatnot so I think you know fans of Kitty will definitely be into Car Chaos and yeah like we just we just really want to rock we have want to have a great time play amazing shows hopefully put out a really really great album that sort of pushes boundaries in terms of what you know, symphonic death, death metal is all about and, uh, and just sort of see where it goes. When you're coming into the recording studio, do you like to do anything differently during the writing and recording process? I know that's two concepts, but to maybe help keep your mind fresh and open to not get bored or get stale with it. Do you do anything that helps you out possibly? Oh gosh, alcohol. Oh <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. Um, not really. I mean, I don't know. Uh, I'm not really, uh, other than beer, probably, I'm not really much of a a ritualistic person. For me, I do like to be uh, overly prepared. So I suppose in a way, being overly prepared is a ritual in itself. Um, So just a lot of practicing, a lot of rewriting. When it comes to the writing itself, I feel like the way that I always approach things is I'm always trying to see how I can improve, to change things to like go through the lyrics and say, "Mm, maybe this word would make more sense if it was this word or, um, Mm -hmm. and constantly like revising and revising and revising until it actually gets put down in the studio. And so by that time, it's like, it's something that's been done so many times that I just sort of know it off by heart. Um, So I guess, yeah, just being overly prepared to almost the point of being obsessed and consumed with it. But I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing when it comes to your art and putting out the best version of whatever it is you want to do. Now, I know you mentioned you guys are going to be playing two two new songs at uh, the CD release show for The Agonist. 
How, yeah. so how much material do you guys have right now for this, if any at all, other than those two? In terms of new songs? Yeah, well, yeah, just stuff that you're working on right now. Yeah, that's you haven't released. Oh, that's um, yeah, there's definitely an album's worth of material already pre- in pre-production. I had gone up early last month uh, to do, uh, I was there for two days to do some pre-production vocals on the demos that they had recorded. And I did eight songs. And then there's a couple, maybe three or four more that I have yet to do uh, pre-production vocals on. But yeah, like as it stands right now, there is a full album ready to go. What can fans expect at these shows from Car Chaos, especially you getting back on the stage for the first time in the, in the last few years? What are they going to get when they come uh, to see you guys? <laughs> I'm going to be bursting with energy. I really, I'm really, really excited to get on stage again with these fabulous musicians, with this amazing new band that I'm in. You know, it's going to be intense. Uh, You're going to get to hear some new songs, which is going to be amazing. I'm going to be in your face. I'm going to be jumping all over the stage. I'm just going to be really, really ecstatic to be back on stage. And I'm sure that the rest of the band will feel the same way. It's been a while since they've also played, and this is a new experience for them as well. So I think as a whole, we're just going to be a band that's really, really excited to get up there and just put our best foot forward and rock the fuck out and hope everybody just gets wild with us and comes along for the ride. What made you want to become a musician, Morgan? What was that spark for you that said, yeah, that's, that's what I want to do right there. If you can recall. Oh man. Well, I don't know. Like when I was super, super young, I always kind of felt the need to just like sing or put down my thoughts into a song. Like I don't come from a musical family per se, where my parents were like in a band or like musicians or anything, but music was always around us. And I just sort of fell into it. You know, when I was old enough to say, I want to learn how to play guitar, you know, my sister Mercedes was learning to play the drums as well. And so we just sort of started to play together, just to to learn together, and then also to be creative. Uh, And Mercedes is a very creative person as well, you know, always singing, always making things, always on the go. Mm -hmm. And for us, it just made sense to sort of learn together. And from that, it was already half a band, right? And so for us, it was never like the desire to, you know, want to be rich or want to be in front of an audience or want to be, you know, famous or whatever. And I know sometimes people are driven by those things. But for us, I think we were so young and so naive that it was like, we just want to create. We just want to make music. And it just so happened that, you know, all the things that happened afterwards, like the right place at the right time, you know, the right songs, you know, sort of ended up sending us on this crazy trajectory in our career. But we were only really driven by, you know, just wanting to have fun, really, and just make music that we wanted to listen to ourselves. You know, it was never a dream that we thought, oh, we're going to, you know, get huge, or we're going to sell, you know, half a million albums, or whatever it was. It was, it was always a very naive thing. There was never a motive really behind it that was a driving force. Kind of strange, but cool. Yeah, very innocent. And Mercedes, man, she's got White Swan right now, and that band is, is beyond uh, unbelievable with the style oh, of yeah. music. They're fantastic, and I love how she continues to you know uh, push boundaries and also just continues to put out music and create. Like They are constantly writing. They're constantly wanting to record and do like a new EP or whatever. And I just love how Mercedes can take a song like Jet and then turn it into a doom song. You know yeah, what I mean? Like yeah. her mind is always like, I hear a great pop song and then I you know, want to do a cover and turn it into a doom song. And yeah. I mean, that was an incredible song. <laughs> Growth of a musician. That's hands down. Yes, totally. <laughs> do you have a go-to album or song that just lets you escape when you were younger? Or maybe even today, do you have that possibly still? Oh, God, yeah, there are so, so many of them. Songs, like, there's a lot of songs that I associate with, like, growing up and stuff, but it's kind of weird, like, like Van Halen and stuff to me. <laughs> like, it brings me back to my childhood. Oh, yeah. Um, Van Halen, yeah, it really, it really, um, you know, like, Panama, Jump, all those songs, like, just remind me of, I don't know, my dad, because he was, like, a big Van Halen fan, and, you know, my dad passed away, like, about 10 years ago, so whenever I 
hear, you know, the earlier Van Halen stuff, I'm always very like nostalgic and, and it really brings me back. And I know it's not like soothing music or whatever, but for me, it really, it really brings me back to a, a more simpler time. Did you realistically think it would be this long for you to get back out with a band possibly, or, or did you just want to take that break before you stepped back in? Honestly, I, I, up until not that long ago, I didn't think it would ever happen again, you know, but I don't know, recently just something kind of changed in my mind. And, you know, maybe it was after doing the documentary and sort of just seeing, you know, all the things that we'd accomplished and enjoying the process, you know, as, as difficult and frustrating as it was at times, enjoying the process of bringing something to fruition, like the documentary and then having it released and then, you know, doing the live album and all that stuff as well. I don't know. I just like projects and I'm, starting to realize that about myself but you know for a long time I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do um, sometimes it's hard to to find yourself after you know doing one thing for so long but I do realize that I at, at heart I am an artist I'm a creator I love to make music I love to create and I love to create with other people as well so I didn't think that it, it, it would ever come to this again but I'm really really glad that I've been offered this opportunity. Morgan, I've had many people on my show that have said Kitty has been a huge impact on them and made them want to start playing music or it just made them feel accepted or just overcome obstacles. When you hear this even today, what goes through your mind when you're hearing this for stuff that you guys created a long time ago? Oh my gosh, it's crazy. It makes me feel old, first of all. Because <laughs> <laughs> these people are so young. But no, like, honestly, it is, it's an honor and a privilege. And sometimes when you are, you know, young and you're in a band and you're caught up in that moment, you know, I'm thinking back to, you know, those years where, you know, Spit was just released and like my life was just a crazy, crazy hurricane. You don't really stop to think about every single person that your music touched. And now I feel like through the wonders of social media, like I'm able to hear these people's stories and I like to think I'm pretty accessible, I guess, on social media. Like you can follow my Instagram and, you know, if you write me, you know, I, I will see your message or I'll write you back or whatever. But hearing people's stories saying, oh, you helped me through high school or you helped me through this difficult time or you inspired me to create, you inspired me to become a musician. And uh, honestly, I am I am beyond honored because really that's what it should be all about, you know. It's like paying it forward in a way. Mm. It's like the things that I've done that were satisfying to me, that helped me to get through things, also have helped other people. And in turn, perhaps, if those people make music that helps other people, it just continues to pay it forward. And it's like a beautiful cycle of people becoming better because of music, because of a community. And I really, I really love that idea. And I love, I love hearing from people about that. I think that's really, really cool. So for Car Chaos, when realistically are we looking for this uh, album to be uh, early next year, late next year? What do you guys have planned, talked about possibly? I wouldn't say super early next year, but I do feel like right now we're sort of feeling like really ambitious and sort of on a trajectory where we would like to be in the studio by the end of the year. So hopefully by, you know, I guess maybe the middle of 2020, the new album should be ready to go. Like right now, we're already starting to try to think about artwork and whatnot. Obviously, the songs and getting, you know, the studio down pat or whatever is something that we'll have to cross when we get there. But I, it's definitely looking like we'll enter the studio towards the end of this year. Folks, Car Chaos has a new vocalist, Morgan Lander. Yes, Morgan Lander. So get out and check these folks out. Uh, also, they're going to be on the Agonist CD release show September 20th and 21st in Montreal and Quebec City. Morgan, how can folks stay in touch with you, Car Chaos, and everything that's going to be happening? How can they do that? Awesome. Okay, well, there are so many places that you can check this out for Car Chaos. You can check out our Facebook. It's just facebook.com slash Car Chaos. Instagram is Car Chaos Official. I still put stuff up on the Kitty Instagram and Facebook. It's Kitty Page for Facebook, Official Kitty for Instagram, and for myself. If you want to come check me out on Facebook, it's Official Morgan Lander, and my Instagram is Dial M for Morgan. 
So you can check out all of the things that I do. You know, I've got a podcast where we review horror movies, uh, Witch Finger Horror Podcast. I've got Car Chaos. I still like to post a lot of stuff about Kitty. You know, there's always fun stuff that I see on the internet. You can maybe see some pictures of my cats too. That's pretty <laughs> cool. Cats are awesome. <laughs> So speaking of, <laughs> speaking of horror movies, which I'm a huge horror fan, any new stuff that's coming out possibly that we should be looking at? I'm very excited about the next two Halloween movies on how they're going to twist this. Oh, gosh, yeah. You know what? I have not seen – like there's been a lot of newer stuff that's coming out, and I'm like, I haven't seen the new Child's Play movie. So I'm not like really caught up on like all these like new remakes that are coming out. I haven't seen the new It yet, the second one, mm-hmm. um, but I'm really excited to, to – get my eyeballs on that because I did see the first one and I was, I was super, super amazed. Hmm. The new Suspiria I haven't seen yet. Oh my God. Like I'm mostly like, I'm just focused on watching my collection of like the shittiest eighties <laughs> horror that you can think of like bad action, bad acting, bad fucking effects. But yeah, like I'm, I'm a huge horror fan. I am very curious to see what they're going to, where they're going to go with, uh, with Halloween. I didn't see the newest one, uh, when Jamie Lee Curtis came back as well. So that's definitely on my watch list. But, oh, it's it's um, good. It's so good. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, I'm definitely going to have to check that out. We'll, we'll have to, I'm going to have to make myself a little, uh, a little afternoon to, to catch up. Yeah, and, and when you get into the new Halloween, I mean, it's like not even 10 minutes and it's right into it. That, that's what I like. I don't like these horror movies that just drag and drag. It's like, let's go. Let's get this on and be done. Cause I- nice. I like that. Yeah, I appreciate when it's like you you have your eyeballs onto a film for five minutes and already it's like, all right, we're kicking it up a notch. I'm, I appreciate that for you, sure. You need to check out Redneck Zombies. That's a good B-horror flick. It's cheesy, but it's great. It's so good. It's Isn't so that a, is that a trauma movie? I think I, I think know Redneck so. Zombies. I think so. Yeah, that's a, yeah. oh my gosh. <laughs> before, <laughs> before I let you go, would you care to do a promo for my show? Absolutely. All right. What's up, everybody? This is Morgan Lander, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Wow. Hey, everybody, stick around. we got some great, great stuff coming up, and you only hear these interviews right here on Bod's Mayhem Hour at Bod's Mayhem Radio Network. Please get out and check out our podcast link, or our YouTube page, I should say. It has our podcast link, YouTube link, and also soon our Twitch link. It's very important that you get out and subscribe and like our YouTube page. Everything and all of Bod's Mayhem stuff will be going up on our YouTube page and plus our podcast link. Also, get out and check out Car Chaos. You will not be disappointed in what this band's bringing to the table for music with their old stuff and plus adding Morgan to this. This is really, really good stuff. So, Morgan, I wish you guys nothing but the best of luck. Oh, thank you so, so much. It was an honor to talk to you again. I'm so happy that we got to do this. And, uh, yeah, thank <laughs> you, everybody, for listening and for checking out uh, Car Chaos and for for sticking around. So absolutely. Thank you so much. It was an honor. Let's, uh, let's hook up again soon. Sure. Sure. Sounds good. Morgan. Thanks. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.